Um, Paul Goldsmith. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, it's my pleasure to speak on on this bill um, and to follow the, the, the former member uh, who I was pleased to hear uh, uh, that Labour continue to support this bill and uh, this, uh, this allows for the government to meet its obligations as a member of the world's uh, financial institutions including the IMF uh, and uh, this government believes uh, that it is important to be an active participant uh, in the international system uh, whether it's being a member of international uh, organisations such as the UN uh, or regional groups uh, uh, such as the Pacific Island Forums or economic organisations such as IMF. Uh, New Zealand is a small uh, isolated economy uh, in the middle of the Pacific uh, all on our own. Uh, we, we don't have uh, the heft and the numbers and the size to boss the rest of the world around. We, um, we have to uh, we benefit enormously from effective uh, international agreements and organisations and, uh, and uh, as, as a global trading nation and we have the most to lose if those uh, uh, understandings begin to unravel and of course it has been very un, uh, um, uh, concerning over the last uh, a few, while, uh, few uh, months and, and years uh, where we've had a lot of uh, uh, concern about currency manipulation by various countries or the way that's been going and uh, that's a very topical issue today uh, and over the past few months and uh, I'm pleased that the Labour Party is maintaining a basically an orthodox stance when it comes to the IMF uh, and our, our role there. I am a little bit more concerned about uh, where they're heading on some of the uh, monetary policy uh, side of things. I still don't quite understand what uh, uh, the leader, Mr Shearer, I think his name is Mr Shearer, was talking about when he was, um, when he was going on about the change in monetary policy uh, um, and uh, how that he was going to change monetary policy, uh, he said in this conference last year, uh, to target the exchange rates. And uh, I'm not quite sure what he means by that. Does, does that mean that we're going to move away entirely from focusing on uh, price long-run price stability, which just about every economist in the world signs up to as the thing that reserve banks can do, uh, or, if, or he's going to somehow um, shift the goalposts uh, entirely and undermine uh, the independence of the reserve bank and start to put political pressure uh, on the reserve bank. And if that's uh, the direction that Labor's going, I'm concerned on that score. But on this bill that we're talking about today, at least we are maintaining uh, a measure of bipartisanship and a, and a measure of general economic orthodoxy. Just uh, in one or two little details, uh, uh, this bill here changes the articles of agreement in relation uh, to the integral parts of the overall package, as has been heard, uh, reflecting the changing relative economic weight in the global economy. And that's no great source for uh, depression. It's, it's, it's a source of uh, optimism and, and uh, excitement that over the past decade we've had this uh, magnificent flowering, particularly of the uh, Chinese and Indian economies, um, rebalancing that. Uh, and uh, I'm pleased that the IMF is responding to that. And this bill uh, gives the government the flexibility to, uh, to be part of a system that effectively recognises the shifts in the global economy. And on that basis, Mr Speaker, I uh, commend this to the House. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Williams.